you hear me now? You all yes. Can hear now? Uh -huh. okay. Yes, Good. we can hear you. Thank you. Great. <laughs> wow. wow. This is... What a day. Yeah. All right. So it is the... Uh, this is our last group meeting for um, this year. And what we'd like to do for the T1 monthly motivations is to kind of just... Um, <laughs> I do want to open in prayer. My goodness, Pamela, I'm going to need you to <laughs> open up this time in prayer. And I, I know why people aren't here. I've seen people um, looking around, walking around exhausted. I mean, it is, uh, it's, it's a rough time of the year. <laughs> It is just a rough time of year. So I understand why uh, people aren't here, but that's why we record it and we put it online. And that's why we have the online space on GroupMe. And that's why we have conversations in there uh, where people can encourage one another and just be a part, even if they can't do another 30 minutes <laughs> at, at on campus, which I understand. Um, so, um, but I want to thank each, each person that's here, right here, right now in person. Kayla, thank you for doing all the Zoom stuff. I don't know why you couldn't log in, but I don't know. But I think we were just being tested right there with a whole bunch of stuff. But look, it's working, I'm even though it's a little late. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for filling in, though. For, um, So now that I said all that, Pema, if you could start with a word of prayer, and then what I'm going to do is just, um, I wanted to just share a few, like a very few minutes about um, today's Veterans Day. So I want to share a little bit about being in the military, but not just, it's not really about me. What I wanted to talk about this and the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because we're going to serve people who are in the military uh, or who live with transient lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to offer to you and anyone else that's listening um, some of the things that I've noticed in all of our moves. And, um, and it's really about hospitality, really. That's what it's about. And so I just wanted to kind of bring that up and then open up conversation about that, about what you see, about how we can do this better, you know, how can we be more welcoming to anyone that comes into our spaces, whether it's church or in, in class, at work, wherever. Um, so that's really what it's about. And um, it's not just about the military life, but I, I've just seen it a lot because of my military life. So I wanna just welcome all of you. Thank you for being here. I hope you, I hope you will share your thoughts at the end. And I hope that this time can just still be a time of, um, refreshment for all of us, even as we listen to a little bit of my story and I hear a little bit of yours. Okay, okay let us go to the Lord in prayer. God of heaven, now we thank you for this time. Thank you for such a time as this uh, special time uh, that you've called us to be in your presence. You've gathered us in you, close to you again. Yeah, we're tired, we're frustrated, but here we are. Uh, we would rather, it's, it's better to be in the house of the Lord uh, than anywhere else. That's what the psalmist said. Uh, and we thank you, Father, that we gather as women in ministry because you've called us to ministry. And we are reminded today, we are mindful of the women in the military and all the others in the military and the spouses of those in the military. We remember them today, oh God, and... Uh, we know that those are uh, predominantly male-dominated fields and uh, those are traditionally male-dominated fields, but uh, we know something about that is women in ministry and uh, we sit here today and declare in our hearts and I'm thankful even as some of us straddle both worlds of being women in ministry and military women. <coughs> We thank you, Father, and we declare, even as the prophet declared in Amos chapter 7 and 12, that I'm not a prophet, nor was I the son of a prophet, but God took me 
God told me, God sent to me to prophesy. So here we are because you called us and you sent us and you told us. So here we are prophesying in our tiredness, in our frustration. Help us now, oh God, to see the good things in your word that you have in store for us today. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I really thank you so much. That helps to continue to set the tone and the atmosphere of what we're really trying to do here. Um, So I was in the military for 12 years and I spent a lot of time overseas. Um, my first duty station was actually Kuwait. And um, uh, from Kuwait, then uh, I was in Japan and then uh, Monterey, California to learn a different language and then Korea. <laughs> and then after that, I worked in the um, National Security Agency, NSA in Maryland. And then I got assigned to be a recruiter where I worked in uh, New York City, Queens. And that's where I went, met my husband. He got, had a baby. And that's when I decided, um, oh, actually that was the first time I ever went to go talk to a chaplain. Um, even though I spent all that time in the military, I, I mean, I've seen chaplains, I went to chapels but that was the first time I sought out a chaplain because I needed help with deciding, okay, am I going to stay in the military or not? Um, if you know about the military lifestyle, um, if you work active duty, full-time service in the military uh, for 20 years, then after the 20 years, you can retire and you get half your pay for the rest of your life. So that was a goal of mine and reaching 12 years, I thought, okay, I'm going to, I was over the 10 year mark. That's a lot of, um, that's like a point that most people, once they hit 10 years, they're pretty much going to stay. So uh, I was at the 12 year mark when we, uh, when I found out I was pregnant. And so my life changed. Um, and I needed to know what was the right thing to do because my supervisors was telling me to stay in the military just, you know, eight more years, but I didn't have peace in my heart thinking, oh, I don't know. Cause actually my dad was in the military. I actually didn't grow up with my dad because he was in a, as a divorced parent. I ended up growing up and living with my grandmother for many years. I mean, that was good, but it would have been better if we were together. I think that was in my head and in my mind. So um, that was, I, I say that to say that that's a part of my life. Like the military has always been a part of my life. It has shaped who I've, where I was raised, who raised me, um, um, all the different places that we've lived. It's, it's, it's a lot. But, but what I will say is in all of those moves and places that I went to before getting married and all of those places, um, you know, I had an idea about God, but I didn't really, I mean, I, if somebody asked me, did you believe in God? Actually, I you know, you have to get these dog tags made when you're in the military in case something happens to you, you wear it on under your uniform and then you put on there your name, your social security number, your blood type. And if you have a religious preference, it's on there. Well, you know what mine said? It said no religious preference. That's what it said. Cause I, I just, I, I, I don't know, um, but look at me, I'm in seminary. <laughs> so um, how did that happen? Well, after I got married, had a child, I then followed my husband around. And so from that, we lived in El Paso for a while. Then we lived in Germany. Um, then we moved to Virginia. Then we moved to South Korea again. And, and now we're here at Fort Hood. So we've been all over the place. And I don't know if you're hearing the need, like the need for me and my family was, oh, this is a family that moves around often. Yeah, so in the army, basically every two to three years, you're moving, um, you're going to another place. And if this here and um, at Baylor at True, if, if you weren't raised here in Waco, then you might remember what it's like to move to a new place to like, to, to have to find new friends, to have to figure out 
who are the people that you can talk to, you know, and for us with the families, like new dentist, new doctor, new school, new bus route, um, new grocery store, uh, new car, because we often had to sell our things and then pick up a new one where we are. Everything is all new and starting over again. So then on top of that is, oh, where can I go for church? So when you see a new family that shows up in your church and they're a military family, no, like this is, they have a lot of background behind them, more than likely. They've had to go through a lot of looking online to sort through all the choices to see what, what might be the place. And if they actually are brave enough to step foot inside your church, right? Know that they are there to see, okay, what does it feel like to be in this place, in this space with you all? And that really matters. It matters a big deal. Um, even me now looking for a church home where I can go and serve, I had to look for another church. And as you're looking around for a church, <laughs> I, I mean, I know it's after COVID now, so everyone's a little Things are just a little different and weird, but I've had some some interesting things happen even now here in this place going to different churches. Um, you know, people aren't expected to see new faces sometimes when you walk into the church like, oh, like, uh, yeah, hi, you know, hey, don't you want to see a new face in your church? Don't you, you know, shouldn't you be ready to say hello? Is there a new face? Um, so, so I, I present some of these things to say, Hey, how are we welcoming others? Do we remember what it's like to be new? Do we remember what it's like to sort of search around and find a place and a people that you can feel like this could be your home? Um, because if you're not comfortable in that space, then how can you receive spiritual help and guidance and support? So I hope that these are some of the things that you might consider, not just towards military families, but anybody that walks into your doors. Um, I just want to say, because uh, I can't talk about everything, but I, I just want to also say in this time and space is the re reason why I'm here at Truett. Well, there's lots of reasons, but one I want to highlight, especially on this day, Veterans Day, is when I was in South Korea before I moved here to um to Fort Hood area. We've just been here a little over a year now. But when I was in South Korea, um, I served at the chapel and at the church that was off post. I did everything. I, I am now a Christian doing all the things, you know. Um, so it went from no religious preference to, oh, oh I, I'm doing everything because I just, I just wanted to. I just felt like this is what I want to do because I love the Lord. So it has changed, like a lot has happened. But as I'm serving, I had an a army chaplain who asked me repeatedly, I mean, not unknowingly, but because he knew me and he saw my heart for service and he saw the things that I was doing and we worked well together. He said, hey, um, there's a military uh, chaplain recruiting briefing. I signed you up. And I was like, what? No, like, I can't do that. And he said, why not? And I said, because women aren't supposed to preach. That's what I said. Actually, can you believe that two years ago? This is, this was me. This is what I taught other people because that's how I grew up, you know, SDC background, conservative. I just like, that is, you know, it says right there in the Bible, it says, do not do this. So I was like, okay, I guess I can't, I guess I got to do other things. But this chaplain just he just would not let it go, not in a like a pressurizing way. He just was like, why not, Sejona? Why not? You know, you're already doing it. Why not? And I said, because, you know, like, I don't want to go against the Lord. Like, I just don't want to do that. Um, you know, I, I care about God. I know you do too. Like, I wrestled with this. And, the, and, the, and actually, the reason why I, I, I started to listen to what he was saying is because I saw how he loved other people. He could talk to anybody. Sometimes I thought his theology was a little loose and <laughs> off, you know, because I thought 
And I, sometimes he would say things. I'm just like, that's not, that's not, that's not, what is this? You know, that's, um, but, he, but I, but I could not deny how he loved other people and how other people could talk to him. And I, I could not, like, I, it was, it was messing with me. So at the same time, he's like inviting my whole family over to his house. His wife is so nice. They are so welcoming and over games, we're playing board games and they just kind of bring it up and talk about it again and again. And he said, yeah, I really think, I really think you should be a chaplain. And he just, and, and so here I am. Can you believe that? I mean, this is less than two years. And so I guess on this Veterans Day, I guess I just want to say, um, and this this man, this chaplain, um, I think he's only been in the army like five years. So, and me, me compared to myself, long career in the army, but he saw something in me and he wouldn't let it go. So I wonder, are there people in our churches? Are there people in your classrooms, people you, you spend time with or you just can see that there's something about them um, and, and maybe you want to call it forth in their life. I don't know if he prayed for me. I'm sure he has because um, he's one of my reference letters to be here today. Um, and I think I'll just close there with that, with that thought of who are we noticing and who might God be highlighting to us that maybe we can speak life into and encourage them in the things that we see that maybe they don't see. Um, and as far as welcoming others into our spaces, into our lives, our homes, our relationships, our churches, what, how can we be more welcoming? Because I've been to a lot of churches and I'm not welcome and in all those faces, you know, nobody says that, but it's just kind of like the way you're treated and how people really embrace you and, and, and allow you space to come in to what they, what it is that they're doing. You know, how, how can we do that a little better? So those are the thoughts that I thought maybe we could just talk about for a few minutes today. Does anybody have anything they want to share? Um, I read uh, this scripture that really spoke volumes to me. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse uh, 8. Um, let me see the new international version says so we cared for you because we loved you so much we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God but our lives as well and the new revised uh, standard version says so deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Just wanted to share that scripture as far as hospitality is concerned. Maybe we can have, be thinking about that as we share. Um, I think that's something definitely as, <clears throat> can y'all hear? Okay, um, I think that's something definitely as the church that we really need to work on is hospitality. We are really good at talking about hospitality, but as far as reaching out to those who are new, especially especially in military town, it's not it's hard. It's hard to come into a place where you are new and don't know anyone and um, there's just a lot of baggage that comes with being in, the, in a new place. Um, I, 
for something that um, I've been wrestling with recently is just not um, not not having a, a hesitancy to go towards people if I think that hey if they they look like they could use uh, somebody to like even hey I I prepared this meal for you um, I don't know if you need this right now but just have being being there and welcoming uh, giving those gifts because I'm so afraid that they're going to reject it. I think that's something that we as a church definitely need to work on. I, I know I need personally to work on just being able to step out and be okay in, in my vulnerability to extend hospitality. Um, I mean, throughout scripture, um, I can't remember specifically which, um, which book it was in, but like the the age like be hospi hospi hospitable for you might be serving angels in disguise um that whole deal is uh, hospitality is a central aspect of the bible and we don't we don't do it because we're scared um and i think like like you hint, hint that like you, what you brought up with the recruiter not recruiter chaplain I'm not even close, I don't know why. <laughs> um, he was relentless in his love for you and in his ministry to you. And it might have been annoying at times, in a way. No, I was laughing at them. <laughs> <laughs> but it might have been annoying at times, or, 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 or even laughable, but God calls us into a ridiculous following of him, even, if, even in our hospitality. I was laughing, but I'm so thankful. Amen. I think uh, if I can just add to that, uh, that I think it takes time. It's time consuming. It'll cost you <laughs> to step across the, the uh, passage to go to somebody else. You know, when you ask somebody, how are you doing? Well, if somebody asks you how you're doing, the expected answer is good. <laughs> if somebody starts telling you exactly how just how they feel, and you're like, oh my gosh, really? You're going to tell I need to get to the parking lot. I don't want to fight traffic. You really got to tell me all this right now, really? You know, so it's time consuming. And, uh, and I hear you about making a meal that might be rejected, but one thing my uh, in my um, chaplaincy class that I'm learning is a ministry of presence. Just like Job's friends, they heard what had happened to him and they came and they sat with him for seven days, not saying anything, not doing anything, just being there. You just need to make yourself available to that person. And, and they're always, uh, my chaplain, uh, uh, trainers will always say to me, are you trying to be a social worker or a chaplain? Because I, I want to like give them this and then scoot, you know. <laughs> so you can't just uh, point them to stuff, to resources and then take off. You need to be there. Sit with them in their poverty. Sit with them in their grief. Sit with them in their newness. And I can say this for, from the perspective of being a newcomer. You know, I'm also foreign and I've moved several places. The first thing, people want to give you stuff that they don't want in their houses. They want to give you clothes. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, they're like, you don't even know my size. <laughs> give me a, you know, trash bag full of clothes. And that's something we have. To, I think that's that's the giving of ourselves that this scripture is talking about. Like, do I have? To, am I making time for the people of God to just sit with them? They need time, and if I sit with them, I'll find out. Yes, they've moved from this place to this place. Their kids are this old. This is what they're looking for. They might not even know about this. And I can suggest to them, have you thought of this thing? Oh, there's this VBS for kids. Your kids are how old? Oh, there's this soccer. They won't know to ask for those things. And I won't know to suggest it unless I sit with them. 
So that's one thing I've learned, not to, to not be a social worker for people who don't need social workers. They need ministry of presence. They need me to be there with them in their stuff. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share that. A and what I've been doing is I'm trying to find a new person. We have a ministry at our church for first time friends, we call it. So people who've joined the church and I am one of the mentors um, and I'll walk with a new person for the whole year and get them on board and onto things and uh, introduce them to people in the hope that after a year they've really found their space uh, and they're doing things for God. So I don't know what you guys have at your churches or if that might be something to look into rather than just point somebody, go and join that ministry, go and I'll hold their hand and take them to join that ministry, introduce them, check on them and have a standing appointment on my calendar uh, to call them weekly, check in on them. They are now my prayer partner for the year. We're walking together with this new person. I think um, oh, it seems so daunting to um, to undertake the task of hospitality, hospitality for each person that walks into our congregation. Um, I think in this season of life for me, where I am almost the visitor, I am the new. Um, it's I think uh, it's just so powerful. Like something easy to start with is, is definitely names. I think names have so much value. Um, Jesus took time to learn names, to learn stories, to sit in um, spaces. And I think also in conversation, um, Tema, you mentioned this, that um, I feel like a lot of times people give us little inklings. So they'll, they'll, they'll describe, they'll say a word or they'll say something in one way and that when um, we are looking for it and when we're looking for those pieces of connection um, to not shy away from them, but in ra rather to encourage them. Um, I've had numerous conversations with, uh, especially youth, uh, because that's just the context that I've worked in, where they'll make a, 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 an offhand comment and I'm like, oh, let's go into that. And that might go into this whole life story, this two hour conversation. But the fact that they were able to trust me with that little offhand comment says something. Um, and I think as we work to be more hospitable, to just be aware of the conversations that we are having, the opportunities that we get. Um, and also, I think <laughs> this is a very American thing. Um, but just invite them to food. <laughs> food is such a good spot to connect over. Um, being invited to lunch after Sunday morning worship is, um, it's how you know that you feel like you belong. <laughs> this summer I worked at a new church and this one lady would ask me every single week, Jordan, do you have somewhere to eat after? Because I want to feed you or I want to go with you to a restaurant or um, and those conversations are just so valuable. Um, I think there's something power. I mean, you say it's American, but I think in some ways, I mean, it's also scriptural because, I mean, if we look at the, the pinnacle of hospitality, which is the, um, the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, the Eucharist, whatever you would like to call it, um, Jesus chose in his last moments to have dinner and break bread and have and share in hospitality with others even the person who was going to betray him um and i mean it's a powerful food is a powerful tool um food is in a, in a lot of ways i think it great connects us to the creator um because um, it is a physical sustenance but it also um it also um, there's this connectedness with all of creation mm -hmm. um and i think we can sense that uh, connectedness even in the connectedness that we have over table conversations i mean the best um that i mean the best conversations i've had are over food 
Um, and I think that's where people feel the most at home. So, and I, I, it's kind of related to what Corbin preached about this morning, um, but he was talking about the first Kings chapter where Elijah is really is in the place where all of us find ourselves right now in this part of the semester where we just need a nap and a drink and a snack and another nap and a drink and a snack. Um, and being in that moment, I mean, God is an example of hospitality. I, I've been thinking about that a lot today um, because he sees, he sees Elijah in that moment and sees that he, um, he sees his needs. He hears him. He hears what he's saying, but he sees his, he sees deeper than that and sees his needs. And I think that's in one way we're called, what we're called to do is to see deeper than what they're saying. Um, seeing that they may say that they are okay, but they may really just need somebody to watch their kids for a little bit, or they may need somebody to take them out for coffee um, and and be a person to just listen. Um, and that's a hard ministry to do. I think we often, I, I know I often will try to avoid those conversations just because it's so draining. But we're not called to easy work, and that's the thing. And hospitality is hard, but hospitality is worth it. So Donna, I, I'm curious if you, uh, so I, I, this came from a church in Norfolk, Virginia, which is a big military town with huge Navy presence. Um, and it seemed, from my point of view, that when some when a new family would come or when a new person would come, um, that they would almost get swarmed at the church that I was in um, because people just wanted to come around them. Um, have you ever felt just like overwhelmed by that or, um, I don't know, like what is, what, what would you say for you and for your family um, is a good way to go about like making that connection deep, um, like without overwhelming or scaring or, I don't know, has, has, has that been your experience? Well, I'm glad that that's an experience mm -hmm. for the families that came in the church in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. um, But that situation reminds me of, and I don't know if it was like that, but it kind of reminds me of, let's say, um, someone passed away or mm -hmm. something bad happened. And then in the beginning, there's a lot of support, a lot mm -hmm. of calls. But then after that dies off, then nobody's around. You know, yeah. they forget and you're just, you know, forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it was like that or, but I, I um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just like Kayla mentioned, just look and see. I think we can see what a person might want or need. I mean, we can see, and like you said, sometimes hints are dropped and then do we pick it up or not? Because we think, oh, I got stuff to do or whatever. Um, but are we open at all? Are we ready at all to make any connections? Um, to be open to what somebody might say to, to engage? Because sometimes I come to truly and I come to class and I'm just doing my work and I'm just thinking about what I got to do and then go to the next thing. I'm not really thinking about who's sitting next to me and what they have going on. I'm not really, I know I'm not doing that sometimes. And so why though? I mean, so I just, I have been thinking about how am I being open and how am I being closed? I, I'm very open normally but I've noticed lately I've become more closed. And, and, then I, and then I wonder why don't I have more deeper relationships with people? Well, it's because I've been closed, you know, I've been closing myself off. And, but why am I been doing that? Because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to try and get to know other people and like go through these conversations. It's just, it's just a lot of work. And I'm not saying it's not worth it, I'm just saying it's just kind of like, oh, you know, um, but but it's necessary. Like the chaplain that was talking to me, inviting us over, it's necessary and it changed my life. Yeah. And so 
Um, I wonder who walks into the, our spaces and our areas. God put them there for a reason. And, and there's opportunities there where they need their life to be changed. They need you to interact with them, but you're not panicked. I'm not panicked. I don't want to. So I, I just been convicted about this whole hospitality thing, especially thinking about Thanksgiving is about to come up. Um, a lot of people think about their family during this time, but a lot of people don't have family. A lot of people don't have places where they can go to. And while everybody else is making their plans, some people don't have anywhere to go or they have a lot of loss that they're thinking about now. And just, just there's just a lot that can be going on right now and as we go into the holiday season um, that we we just can, can we ask God to help us to keep these things in mind even as we go through our own stuff how can we be more aware of what else is going on for others and let me yeah I think it's a I, I look at I look at it as a glass half full kind of thing yeah, I think for foreigners and military families, Thanksgiving and Christmas are the loneliest times, right? You, you, you know, you don't really have anybody inviting you to them. I, I've been in the country for 22 years. I don't know how to make a turkey. I've never made a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes Christmas time, guess who still got money in the pocket? Me! Because I don't got to buy presents for a whole bunch of people. I just got the same four all the time. <laughs> My itty bitty family is all I got. <laughs> I tame up. I'm here for you. I teach you how to make a turkey. It's not that hard. We can learn how to fry one together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, did anyone else want to add anything? I see... Um... Dr. Yancey said a few things there, and Lamika said something. Do you want to voice anything, though? You said something in chat, but do you want to voice anything? We'd love to hear from anyone else, if you want to share. Yes. Um, so I, I put in a chat acceptance. Um, and what I've learned in my experience on both sides, as far as uh, being... Um, hospitable to people and the other side as well. Um, for me, I've learned that I need to check in with myself. Check in with me, see where I am spiritually before I approach or as I'm approaching people to really just take in, maybe take a deep breath or whatever, because whatever is going on within me at that moment when I'm approaching people, I give that energy to them. So if a person is not feeling accepted, that could, um, you know, cause someone not to come back um, to the church or it may feel like it's, well, feel like it's not authentic as well. So I think that's a, a very, that goes along with um, the comment about being present, being present as well and along with everybody else has said, so. I want to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, so, John, thank you so much for sharing your life story of what you chose to share today. So it's always very meaningful to hear people's stories and how God is at work. And then the comments that you all have made, uh, quite frankly, uh, with all the things that you've talked about with hospitality and uh, our generosity that comes with that, uh, begs us to go back to the scripture in terms of uh, what does it mean to have a sense of belonging? And that sense of belonging is such a scriptural basis, quite frankly, that sometimes I think we forget that. And, uh, uh, and yet that sense of belonging comes with our generosity, with our hospitality, with the ways that we reach out and include others. And uh, through our kindness, quite frankly, and through our gentleness and the things that we talk about with the fruit of the Spirit. So just want to encourage all of us about that and to keep our eyes open, to keep our ears open. So John said very clearly about you know, what happens in class. And that's, uh, it's one of the things I said just to my class this week, which is think about the people who are beside you, even if they're on the screen, no matter what, everybody's carrying their own stuff, quite frankly, right now. And it's not the stuffing that goes in Turkey. It is our stuff that we're carrying. And it's, uh, it's hard when we're stressed, when we're tired, when 
everybody's doing the best they can in this in this back to person and in person presence. Uh, we find people being impatient. Uh, you know, some people are not thinking as well. They're not uh, thinking like uh, decision making those kinds of things. So, so that sense of inclusion, if you will, our generosity, our hospitality that we're talking about, that sense of belonging actually is uh, very, very possible to play out in the classroom uh, with your peers and with the people that you see all around as you're thinking about your classes. So just want to encourage each of us. Uh, this is a really good reminder today, uh, even before we get into the Thanksgiving season. And I'm going to have to run because I've got a five o'clock student appointment, y'all. So I'm, I'm sorry to leave y'all, but I'm going to have to, uh, to run. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. I always am blessed by these meetings. So our numbers make no difference. It's, it's what happens in, in the quality of what we have. So it's wonderful. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, y'all. Take good care. Bye. All right. And we close also. Um, is there any last final comments that anyone wants to share before uh, we close in prayer? Mm, I just kind of wanted to share that I've been welcomed in some churches that we've been in. And um, yeah, we've moved a lot. <laughs> We've moved uh, so many times and gone to so many places, but when we first arrived here in the United States, we had an infant, our child was six months old. And you know, from Africa to United States is a long, 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 long flight. And we went through France. Then we came through, port of entry was Atlanta, then went to St. Louis, Missouri, and our college was in uh, Illinois, Southern Illinois University. And by the time we got off that plane, we had no idea if we were headed south, east, west, what, nothing. Like, where are we? What are we going to do now that we're getting off this plane? And we have this infant. And we had, uh, uh, through the International Students Association, asked for host parents. Uh, and when we got off that flight, this couple, Grandma Joyce and John Schrader, that was in 1999. They were standing there with a sign with our name on it and a teddy bear, blue teddy bear for our son. He's 20 years old now, I still remember that. And they took us to our university housing that we had you know, selected and paid for in advance. And they had gone to the Goodwill store and to the dollar store and bought like basics. And there was, our beds were made and there was bread and peanut butter and jelly and milk in the fridge. And we were so exhausted. That was our dinner. That was our breakfast, lunch the next day. And I was so grateful. That's like the, that's like the grandma and grandpa my kids really know to this day. And when we got to Pennsylvania, uh, my husband had gone before and he went to this church, Wesleyan Church. And when we finally came with the kids now, the men's ministry was there to welcome us and get stuff off the truck, you know, the U-Haul truck and put stuff in the house and what have you. And we were so welcomed at that church. And when I gave birth to my little one, the uh, uh, pastor's who, assistant, pastor's wife would come and hold the baby for me so that I can take a bath, you know, with it. But that same church, the senior pastor's wife is the one who, who called me, you know, years later and said, Evelyn, you know, pray for my daughter there. We're trying to get to adopt a baby and they couldn't. Uh, they were having all kinds of issues. She said, please pray for Lisa. She's so desperate. She could take a black baby at this point, you know. And, and those, that same church, somebody came to me and said, you are wasting money buying this big house. Where you come from, you have tiny little houses. Why don't you just buy a small house and send the rest of the money back home to the people who are suffering? They, you, why do you need a walk-in closet? Do you know a walk-in closet from where you were growing up? You need to stop trying to keep up with us over here and take care of where you get. All this to say, you are one of those people in your congregation. You are that man's ministry waiting to offload the truck on a Saturday or Friday or you are the, des the grandma saying to me uh, that it's desperation to take a black baby, or 
you are that person holding my baby so that I could uh, take a shower. Or the other person who are saying, you are too poor to own a house in this America. You are somebody in your church. Which one are you? Which one are you? The church building itself does not show hospitality or welcome anybody. It's the people in the church that do that. And as long as you go there, as long as your name is on that roll, roster, that roll call, you are responsible. You are responsible for somebody, for at least somebody in your church. And, and thank you, Sajana, for bringing that up to us, even as we're going to Thanksgiving. May somebody give thanks to God for our hospitality as members of our congregation. May we be a blessing to somebody this Thanksgiving. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone for your time today and for your thoughts, um, for your expressions of, you know, what you're experiencing right now, practical things that you've done or are wrestling with or what has happened to you. I, I appreciate all these things and um, I hope that it, that God will use this conversation to bring to our minds how he would have us move forward next, whatever it is. Uh, so let's close in prayer. Um, do anybody want to pray? Otherwise, I could, do you want to pray? You look, okay, thank you. Yeah, really quick, Kima, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, for sharing just about your experience. I just want to take a second to honor that because, wow, oh my, I'm going to have to chew on that for a minute and say, yeah, I am one of those people. Um, wow, thank you. Um, yeah. and thank you, Sajana, for the ways that you were vulnerable and, and shared as well. Oh my goodness. All right, let us pray. Papa, God, we thank you for the ways that you care for us, that you know us by name, that you know everything that we've been through, that you see us, Lord. You are the God who sees. We thank you for um, our military members, especially on this day, God, for their families, for um, the calling that you have put upon their lives, for the ways that they sacrifice, Lord. I pray over, um, just right now, the people in our congregations, um, specifically the people that are within our close communities, the ones who we may not know yet, <laughs> um, and the ones that you have for us to meet um, in the coming weeks and days and months and years, Father. Um, we pray that you would in, in encourage us to act with intention, intention in our words, in our rememberings, um, in our understandings, and in our considerations, Lord. Um, I pray that as we continue to wrestle with what it looks like to be a follower of you, God, that we not become numb, that we not um, be so overwhelmed with the things that are on our mind, um, but rather that we would see others the way that you see us, Father. Um, yeah. We thank you for this group, for this place of community, this place of belonging, of vulnerability. Um, we know that you are here, Father, and we thank you for um, your love and care for each and every one of us, both here and not here. Um, I pray over the concerns and the um, frustrations that are present, Lord. Um, that you would be with us, that you would make your presence known. You guys are good to you. And that at the end of the day, we would know and love you better. In all this and more, Father, in your son's name, amen. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Amen. Very briefly before we go, um, I want to thank Dr. have the TWIM um, meeting, the TWIM uh, end of semester, end of semester get together um, on December 9th from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Houston people, if you can make it, that's great. If not, um, next semester we're also gonna try to do something on Zoom. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to get to, two groups together that are from two different campuses, but it's gonna be at uh, Julie's, um, at Julie's Ranch, we'll have fire games, well, we'll have a fire pit games and um, <laughs> and, and fellowship. Um, I, I need to specify because that, that might attract the wrong crowd, um, but um, it'll be the true at times, the Waco edition tomorrow. I, I think Maxie can put it in the full one later, but we, right, I didn't specify that it was for all, so she won't do that. That's it. Okay, thanks. We'll check in with the other uh, Truett students, see if maybe we can couple and, and uh, come together, yeah. All right, I'll see you on GroupMe, on the online GroupMe thing, and uh, ha have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, God bless, bye-bye. Um, yeah.